Welcome to the RBA Small Business Show. Your number one resource for business growth education, insights, and news. Let's get today's show started. Welcome to the RVA Small Business Show exclusively on the RVA Small Business Network. I'm Corey Mosley, your host for today's show. Human communication is traditionally expressed through the written or spoken word, but so much more is said through nonverbal actions. Do you ever wonder how other people perceive your behavior? What if I told you interpreting someone's behavior in real time can help you become more aware of human emotion and intention? Well, here to help us explain what is driving our actions and perceptions and how to potentially change them is Blake Eastman. Blake is the founder of the Nonverbal Group, an organization that studies human behavior using a range of technologies to help improve human communication. Blake, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. That was a really good intro. <laughs> good job. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'm super excited to have you. It's been probably over a decade um, or more. Yeah, maybe a good decade. I had the opportunity to uh, attend and be a student over a decade ago when you were in New York and and doing uh, what you do very well and have been doing for a long time. So it was great to have an opportunity to talk about this topic because we don't talk about nonverbal communication enough. And when we think about body language and we think about some of the obvious things that layman's have been taught, right? Oh, well, you know, if someone's crossing their arms, that that obviously means they're closed off or standoffish or you know, I was taught the thing with the eye, right? If the if you ask a question and the eye goes, you know, in this direction, that's a lie. But this whole idea is far more interesting and complex than we think, right? Yeah, exactly. I the problem is the truth is there's a book in the 1970s released called Body Language. And everything in a certain way stems from that actual book. And the problem is it just lumps in all of these areas of communication and psychology that are not actually real, but society perceives them to be real. So for example, the amount of people that have told me, like, if you look to the left, you're lying because you're accessing the creative side of your brain and stuff like that. It's just, and it's, it's a problem because what it does is it, it shifts people's perception of the world. And then they start seeing that and creating that narrative, even though it's not grounded in truth. I, I think because that is one of those things that really comes to mind with that example that you just said. And what's interesting for me is I think as a speaker, so like if I'm speaking to an audience, traditionally, I would look out at that audience, particularly if it was a smaller group. So like 300 or less where you can actually see once you start getting into big numbers, there's lights, there's things hitting you. You can't tell what's going on. But in those rooms where I could see people, if I looked at someone that I thought wasn't paying attention to me as I was speaking, I would emote towards that person, right? Almost to like, hey, I I'm doing this. But there's so many different things going on with body language now. And I think technology has created that, right? People in their phones, on their phones, thinking about all these other things. There's a lot of misinterpretation, particularly in the business world, which is an area that you specialize in with executives, right? Yeah, I mean, in the business world, it's really, most of what we do is about alignment. So there is this way that you want to be perceived. The exercise I do with most, most of my executives and everybody should do it that's in any sort of leadership capacity is quite simply, you do, I call it the funeral exercise. So you close your eyes. <laughs> the funeral yeah, exercise? The funeral okay, exercise. Go, go it, re it really makes it visceral, right? Yeah. So it's like you, you're sitting at your funeral and you're observing it. And every single person you've ever worked with is attending this funeral. And it's like, what are they saying about you? Some are some whispering and saying, you know, he was one of the he or she was one of the toughest people I ever worked with, but I am where I am in my career because of them. Are they saying he was friendly and nice, but really incompetent? And it just gives you an understanding of how others may be perceiving you. And really what we're trying to do is take how you want to be perceived and your actual behavior and bridging those two gaps. So I work with people who want to come across as assertive and powerful and they're really engaged and they're really excited about what they're building, but their behavior doesn't show that. And when I say the word or the phrase doesn't show that, what I mean is their behavior is not in alignment with how society perceives somebody to actually be. And that's the weird thing is that th there's no real 
meaning and behavior. It's all how we perceive it. But we all have these perceptual lenses that is agreeable in society. And we know this because of actors. Like a really good actor could be in a movie and we actually believe that they're a villain or they're a criminal or this, when the reality, they're just playing a role. So they're mimicking what society perceives as alignment with that behavior. Well, you know, it makes me it makes me think of the method actors, right? Exactly. Uh, uh, when they, they filmed Lincoln here and Daniel Day-Lewis was in town uh, for that filming, and basically they said he stayed as Abe Lincoln everywhere he went all day. Like he would go down, you know, town and enjoy some of our great restaurants, acting like Abe Lincoln. So I mean. That's that man's a savage. Like uh, <laughs> there will be blood and all those movies. Like, yeah, they can just uh, Heath Ledger did this, yeah. and Joaquin Phoenix and the Joker. Like somebody was telling me they were interacting with Joaquin during the filming, and it was like he didn't. He was the Joker the entire type of time, like the entire time. So he had to embody like the thoughts, the behaviors, the feelings, the the actions of that character, and that's when it becomes believable. And I think in our business interactions, one of the barriers for a lot of people is they get in their head that there's a way that they should be mm. and it mess it messes with them. So like one of the words is professional. Like some people say like, I feel that I need to be professional. And in their head, professionalism means a subset of things. But then in their a in actual application, they might come across as like cold or not engaged or so there's this constant disconnect between how you're wanting to be perceived and how society is perceiving you. And you should always work towards solving the gap. And one of the problems is our mechanism for doing this usually is our own perception. And then sometimes like friends or people that give you feedback, but they're giving you feedback that's in alignment with how they think you should show up. So it's, right. it's tricky. It's a tricky, nuanced world. So what advice? So, okay, that's going to lead me to the next question, right? So it's kind of like, all right, we're starting to identify some problems. And I I'm sure there's people watching this now that are like, yeah, that's me. I'm, you know, I was having this conversation literally today before we had the opportunity to this interview about someone who's coming in to the studio to interview and they're like, well, how should I dress? Should I have a, a suit on? Should I have a tie? But in my industry, we don't really do that. We're kind of more khakis and laid back. So it was almost like he was playing that game in his head. And, you know, my first statement was, well, I don't want you to be in something that is not natural for you or comfortable because that will come up you'll come across uncomfortable so i'm used to wearing suits and ties so i'm not like oh you know oh i'm you know trying to fidget and move everything around because i'm used to this process so what advice do you have for people who want to communicate effectively want to come across because we have so many cues going on there's so much video social media where we're video crazy and people are trying to sell their products and services trying to engage, trying to bring people right towards them. What advice, what are some tips just in terms of trying to navigate some of that stuff? Yeah, so the first step is engaging with the thoughts. So it literally happened with me. I was like, I get in front of this thing. Like, I'm in a t-shirt right now. I have a suit in that room. And I'm like, damn, Corey stepped it up here. He's got like a whole production set up here. And in my head for a second, I'm like, should I try to switch in this last five minutes to the better camera? And should I try to run and get something else? But the problem is the act of doing that would take me out of being here for the audience. Mm -hmm. So like I'm willing to be like, all right, I won't look the most polished so that I can fully be present and in this moment. And a lot of the times people choose the things like the outfit or the little specific thing with missing the whole purpose of like, the goal of the communication is to solve for whatever that you're solving for. Right. And a lot of people just, they're not getting clear at like what they're committed to and what type of end result they want their communication to actually be. So that that's the first thing. And what I've found with working with like literally thousands of people at this point is people are the most effective when they usually are the most comfortable. Right. So th the whole notion of like being yourself is kind of a real crazy thing because there's there's I, I make an argument that there's no such thing, it, mm. like there there really isn't. Like we all, in order to act into a social world and and be a part of society, we've got to play a little bit of roles. We have to maybe not talk when we should. We want to talk. Like everybody can't just be themselves all the time. But how you are with a friend when you have like unconditional positive regard and you know you're not being judged, and you know. You're just free. That's your base. Like that's mm -hmm. where you grow from. And most people create these bases that are not really them. And it's why they feel weird. And people 
are really good at identifying when behavior is like outside of the bell curve. So like my job is to be look at someone and be like, okay, they're coming across in society and people are saying that they're creepy. It's because of their smile timing. It's because of a low level of blink rate. It's because of morphology and facial expressions, all these specific things. But most people are just looking at someone and going, they're weird. We're up and off. I'll trust them. Right. And then they create all these narratives like, oh, they're being salesy or, or they're being this or they're being that. So that's why I really think that getting to that point of like being comfortable first and then building on top of that. And the way to do this, I, I have always, I've had people do this, is you sit there and you record some video of you and your friends having a conversation, you just being you, and um, you wait like 10 or 15 minutes into the video where you're going to forget that you're being recorded. And that's usually the base of your communication, mm. the power of your communication. That's interesting because a lot of your work is based on that that video feedback. Here, here's a question I've had because... I, I don't, your expertise is so unique and I'm so fascinated by the, the reads and the reading in the face. This is why I don't play poker. I know you're a poker, that's a whole yeah, other yeah, meeting. Yeah. Uh, you're a poker expert. The reason why I, I always joke with people that I never got into poker is because I wear my expressions on my face. If something's crazy or I see something crazy, like you're gonna see me emote. And I, so I'd never survive in poker because if I had the good hand, you'd know. And if I had a crappy hand, you'd know for sure. But I want to ask you this because I'm fascinated by this idea of peacocking, this idea of behavior that I will see both men and women, particularly in my world of media, speaking, where having a theme or kind of a thing matters. And, you know, I see somebody with red hair and I'm like, is that just for the effect or is that who they are? Like, what's the how do you discern between authenticity and, and, and something that's more of a gimmick? In, in some yeah, oh, I mean that's a, that's we could have like hours, <laughs> hour long conversation about that one. I mean, this is I I believe it's a personal choice. Uh, I mean, back in the day, I used to do a lot of stuff in New York City where I'd have like broadcasters come over, or I'd go over there, and some of them are effectively acting like the person that they actually are on screen versus the person that they are off screen are so different. It's almost like, whoa, like I wasn't expecting that. And, you know, part of that is like a shtick, a, a thing, right. a, an element to have. But I think the way that our culture has been shifting, even from even from like when I was in high school to like now is way more geared towards we want authentic self. Right. That's the that's the Instagram influencer. That's all the YouTubers talking to the camera. Like, right. We don't I, I think society is shifting towards we don't we think something's wrong with that kind of like, I'm trying to be a certain way that I'm not. However, right. if we were to go back 30 years ago and or 40 years ago and people would saw this video, they'd be like, ah, I don't trust it because it wasn't in that cultural narrative. I would have been more polished. And this, this is dependent on like state and where you go. Like I've done stuff across the world at this point. And so for example, like if I speak to a Nordic country in my laugh, laughy sort of a New York style, it, it's off-putting for them. Like an over overwhelming amount of smiles for them is perceived as phony. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that down south, you're perceived as rude. Right. So th there's this cultural container that is so critical and so nuanced that until you see those things, you have to know how to navigate them. But yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things. I think with, with media personalities, I, I do know that if you analyze charismatic people or you analyze people that have large followings, there's a lot of facial movement. There's a lot of variability. There's a lot of activity. There's like certain themes, but I think it's so much more valuable to develop who you are right, and be comfortable and confident in that person. Otherwise, you know how hard it is to have to like turn on your, your onstage persona, right? Like, okay, I'm going into nonverbal mode. Like, hey, Corey, nice to meet you. It's just, it doesn't feel real. It's, and it's, it's hard. It's a lot of effort. And I'm always skeptical of, of people who have that behavior. It's so funny because, I, and I, <laughs> if I go into a business based on my background, just having worked with all these businesses over my life, if I'm literally sitting in a business, I'm analyzing it. And I'm curious, like I'm going, oh, you know what? They could probably, you know, cut down on their, their lemon cost must be outrageous because they bring everybody water with lemon, even though you ask it or not. Like I'm always doing that kind of stuff. I have to imagine, are you literally like walking around like the Terminator? Uh, yeah. calculating people's expressions and movements like in the so airport is, and stuff. So this is what's really interesting. So 
most people, what's going through my head is not meaning, it's noticing. Mm -hmm. So I'm not looking at people's behavior and making deductions about who they are as a person. I'm looking at their behavior and making deductions on how I think society will perceive them. So for example, you know how you said that like facial, uh, like you wouldn't be able to play poker? Yeah. So people, that's something we code for with software. It's, we call it facial reactivity. So some people have a low level of facial reactivity. And what you need to understand is a lot of what's going on in a social interaction in your face it's not emotion. It's a byproduct of what's called social coordination. So for example, like if me and you were sitting down and having a conversation right now, everybody who's listening to this, they're probably not like shaking their heads, smiling, smirking, and laughing at everything I say, because right. it, they don't need to coordinate where me and you are having like gestures where we're like, Oh, I understand what you're saying. I know that. So a lot of it's social coordination, but sometimes what happens with some people is like the facial expression doesn't match where they're actually at. So, for example, they're confused what, by something you say. And some people are like, oh, well, I'm not so sure. And they'll, they'll be like this. But they look like, huh? And they come across so harsh. Right. Like that that person is going to have problems connecting with people because they're displaying this like harsh behavior. When in reality, they really mean a three harsh, but they're displaying a 10 harsh. Right. And another person who just stares at you and looks at you and doesn't do anything that's another problem with social coordination. So I'm looking more for how people are interacting in their social world as opposed to like meaning. And once you're able to see it there, then you're able to get a better understanding of where they're at. Man, this has been such a valuable conversation. Uh, before I let you go, I want to hone in on one thing in particular. One, I want to talk about negotiation mm -hmm. because a lot of people now, obviously Zoom has become, you know, my mother's on Zoom, right? Having cocktail parties and things. There were obviously pre-COVID, you'd say Zoom, someone, oh, I don't know if I have the software, let me download it, what is that, what's the dial-in? Now, it's it's very normal to do sales calls via Zoom, do everything really in that visual standpoint versus just being on the phone. Where well, you can do tonality, and I'm sure there's, obviously there's techniques there, but from a visual standpoint, what's something that could help business owners that are negotiating or or even selling, we can use selling or negotiating in this visual environment. What are, are, are there some tips or takeaways that you can share with us for people who wanna start to improve possibly how they're reading their prospects or the people that they're pitching um, in that manner? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot more complicated than people think, but there are some simple tips. So first and foremost, I like, a lot of negotiation is about mindset. There's a quote that's something to the effect of whoever, if two people are negotiating it, whoever wants it the most is already losing or something to that effect. Yeah. And I find a lot of people like the desperation or the emotion that's latent with the negotiation is so high. It makes their behavior look so invariably weird. So in order for you to actually be able to perceive the person across from you, you need to deal with your own stuff and the negotiation. So my negotiation tactic has always just been like very honest and straightforward. I did it this morning. I was like, listen, here's the deal. Like we have this amount of money to this amount of time. If you could work within those parameters, I would love to work with you. Like right. if that's not going to work, it, I know you're worth it. I know you're great, but it's just not going to work for me. And I just, so I do this thing where I just like force people. I put the ball in their court and they're done. And then I'll, I do a lot of nuanced stuff. Like that's why it's hard. So like, so when somebody says something, I'm like, listen, did you just like put in the door technique me? Like, did you just say it was going to be 10K and make it? I, I just call it out because it's it's my brand. I'm from New York. We're very, I, I this is very, you know, I, I just don't play the game. Like, that's it. Like, I'm just not doing it. Like, I'm not doing yeah. this little dance right now. Yeah. I, I man, oh, wow. Because I, it's the same way. I'm, I'm, it's like, I'm like, listen, I understand you've got your kind of road to the sale questions and you qualify and pay. And the joke I will say, I know you got to do the pain pleasure uh, technique on, yeah, 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 but yeah. like kind of let's land the plane a little bit. I'm I'm in the mode to buy, so let's kind of complete it. And I think, um, all right, what we're gonna do, cause cause we're out of time, we're gonna we're, we're gonna see you again. We're gonna have yeah, let's do another because, one. I love yeah, it. because we yeah, need yeah. to talk about there's so much value in what you're doing now. The nonverbal group, who who is your client base, like? You know, our viewers are business owners, small business people are watching this are, are you know, across that scale. How are you helping business owners right now at Nonverbal Group? Yeah. So right now, the base is really very large organizations and teams. Um, 
uh, entrepreneurs of every shape and size, but we're now trying to take a lot of our higher level technology and, and democratizing it and making it more available to the person. So I strongly recommend, you know, uh, sign up for our newsletter, nonverbalgroup.com slash newsletter. I write a newsletter every Monday that like gets into the details of these things and producing more content and things to serve like just a real wider audience. Fantastic. Well, we're going to direct people there. Uh, Blake, so much information. You're, you're doing great work. It's, it's, and it's great to see you uh, still being a champion in this area to help people now more than ever with, with these nuances yeah. in terms of that navigation. So thank you for joining the show today. Thank you so much for having me. And I'll, I'll wear a college shirt and a suit jacket next time I'm on the show. <laughs> and I'll do the reverse. <laughs> yeah, you do the reverse. Show up in a t-shirt. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. If you'd like to connect with Blake and learn more about the Nonverbal Group, you can message him directly at Blake at nonverbalgroup.com. This has been another episode of the RVA Small Business Show, RVA's only online streaming video network dedicated to small business growth, education, trends, and news. I'm Corey Mosley, and I will see you next time. This has been another episode of the RVA Small Business Show, presented by the RVA Small Business Network. Be sure to like, share, and join our newsletter at rvasbn.com.